Hello everyone and welcome to the Across the Stages podcast, brought to you by Absolute Motorsport Radio and also available on Absolute Motorsport TV. I'm James Casey and joining me today will be Joshua Sittill. We're going to be reviewing a tour de course that was full of drama. It was heartbreak for Elvin Evans on the final stage of the Tour de Course. What looked like a second victory in the WRC was cruelly, cruelly denied after a puncture in the dying stages of the event. And it was Thierry Neuville, in the end, that took the victory and moved to the top of the championship. We'll get on to his performance and how he's done a very good job to get into the lead of the championship after we first reflect on just how unlucky Evans was uh, was leading by 11.5 seconds going into the final stage after a toughly fought weekend with first Tanak uh, and then with Neuville uh, but a p- puncture on the last stage seemingly um, out of nowhere he doesn't really seem to know how he got the puncture I think he just got it on a bit of straight bit of road so desperately unlucky uh, for the Welshman yeah, definitely. Incredibly, incredibly unlucky because he'd done such a good job at me before then. Uh, and then for it all to sort of fall apart in that final stage was was really, really gutting to see. I mean, if you look at his first stage on Sunday, you know, the penultimate stage, that was so, so impressive. It pretty much, you know, I thought he'd won in the rally there. You know, Neville said his final stage was awful. Uh, you know, he wasn't aware that, you know, Evans obviously had that issue on the power stage. So he pretty much resigned to the fact that Evans had won the rally. But then, of course, you know, disaster struck for, for Evans. And like you said, couldn't really do anything about it. So just kind of one of those things. Uh, I'm glad he still came home to get a podium because obviously he definitely deserved, uh, you know, at least something out this weekend. But yeah, fully deserved the win. But, um, you know, unfortunately, just not to be. It was a bit of an odd one. I kind of said before the event, I thought it was going to be quite competitive, but I didn't think that he was going to be fighting <laughs> with Tanak. I mean, that was a, an incredible effort from him um, throughout the rally, really proving that M Sport are still there, um, and he is um, back on form after a pretty tough 2018. Absolutely. I mean, you know, now two podiums in a row, and you know, this one was was even more impressive uh, than that one in Mexico. I mean, you know, really the running order played very little part in Corsica um, and for them to be that quick it's a really really good sign I think going forward uh, once again I think it says every week my sort of prediction that they aren't going to win a rally this year is getting sort of the chance of that happening you know slimmer and slimmer um, because of the chances of them winning are getting greater and greater so you know we'll have to see if they're going to be competitive I mean what do you reckon for the next couple of rounds do you think they'll still have a chance there? Well, yeah, it's going to be a little bit trickier um, on on the gravel events now for for Evans because he's going to be a little bit higher in the championship, so he doesn't have a, a fantastic running order. But he did pretty well in Argentina two years ago, didn't he? Um, so could see something from that. And I think Sundan as well is um, uh, back on form now. Mm-hmm. Uh, a really good fifth place for him, actually, considering that this is an event that he'd never done in a WRC car before. So um, looking up, for M Sport now, I, I think that they'll do pretty well in the next few events in terms of when they might get a victory. Maybe, maybe Portugal. They did well both of those drivers, didn't they, last year at Portugal? Yeah. They were both on the mm-hmm. podium. Maybe that one. Um, not sh- too sure about the next events, but uh, they're definitely in with a shout. Uh, Tanak. Let's um, let's talk about him quickly, actually, because uh, he also had a puncture. That's why he dropped out of contention for the victory. And um, there was a little bit of a debate um, that Tommy Mackinnon put forward uh, about going back to an old speck of tyres where they had like an inflating bit inside of it because there have been a lot of punctures and especially in this event, it was a big problem the punctures and it, it certainly decided the result here. Yeah, it's never great to see. I mean, when a driver goes off the road, you know, you can kind of say, well, it's probably their fault, their co-driver's fault. But when they sort of get a puncture, a lot of the times it's sort of like, well, it's not really their fault. It's a bit of bad luck and it's sort of unfairly mixing up the field, I think. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, of course, Mackin is going to say that because it's his driver that's been affected. But, you know, even just from a neutral point of view, I think uh, it would be good to, to maybe look into that because uh, it's not like we, it's not what we want to see. And uh, as you said, we saw that a lot at, uh, you know, the rally of 10,000 corners. Well, I think quite a few of those seem to cause punctures. Yeah. And I think um, uh, so obviously Tanak had one, Meek had one, which was his own fault. Latvala had two. I think one was his fault, one seemingly wasn't obviously it, it, quite a lot of speculation involved yeah. but that's mm. what the drivers have said i think a lot of them will admit to when it's their fault i think latvala would definitely yeah. he's very self-critical isn't he yeah so uh, an odd one um 
but um, I suppose you kind of expect it on the gravel, um, but on the tarmac it is a bit of a surprise. But, uh, but it does does affect cuts. perhaps you know maybe affects the Toyotas though quite a lot. It seems yeah, you know, all of them had a, an issue, um, and they're only now third in the championship despite having what we think is the the best package. You know they're now behind Citroen and Hyundai in third. So uh, yeah, I guess on reflection it's pretty terrible rally for them really. Um, especially you know from what it could have been, Meek looking so quick before the rally started and being very quick at the end, but uh, you know Tanak highest place in sixth, you know not good. Yeah, very very poor event for them, and as we said, we kind of expected them to, to push on here, but in the end, it is now <laughs> Neuville and Hyundai who have snapped it up. They've moved to the top of the championship, and it's fair to say we didn't expect that at all. And then, I think <laughs> Neuville has done a fantastic job this season. I think he's had a brilliant. Um, start to the season and um, to be in the lead of the championship obviously it's going to make it tough in Argentina opening the road but um, what one effort he's put in I think yeah I think probably his best start to the season you know in recent years this is sort of his what third attempt is in it basically at the title and I think every year he's got better and better um, I think I mean we always have seen him do very well at the start of the year uh, it is usually sort of later on in the year where things start to go amiss but usually he actually has the car, doesn't he, in the first half of the year and then maybe sort of tails off in the second half. This time, of course, he hasn't really had, you know, a fast car, certainly compared to the others, um, but he's leading the championship. So maybe the second half of the year, uh, when the car comes together, uh, you know, we really could see a, a good push. And it's almost a waiting game, isn't it? Until then, uh, all he can do is stuff like this and just carry on, pick up the results, pick up the, the sort of good luck when it comes and uh, wait until that hound eye improves. Yeah, there is definitely improvement to be made on the Hyundai, as we kind of spoke about before the event. Um, uh, but uh, obviously Neville was really good, but Sordo struggled a little bit, did a pretty good job in fourth. Uh, and Loeb um, had an incident on Friday, but then even after that didn't have much pace. He was down in eighth. So uh, there is still improvements to be made, and Neville doing a, a fantastic job and really separating himself uh, from those two guys, uh, it was a bit of a shame to see that from Lowe because we kind of touted him as possibly one of the contenders for victory before. Yeah, I mean it was over before it started for what the second year in a row, pretty much. <laughs> it was yeah. uh, you know over on that on that first stage, and like you said, I mean Sordo had that great stage win. I think like a thirty mile um, stage he won it was really really impressive then, um, but just didn't really show it for the rest of the rally. You know he was sort of up there sometimes and then completely down there other times not really getting to a rhythm on a on a rally but we kind of expect him to do quite well on so fourth place is not bad and it's still manufacturer points but it's also you know not great i mean he i think at one point he had an opportunity to really beat ogier but uh it pretty much fell away from him and ended up i think about 38 seconds off ogier and uh was was quite lucky really to to come away with fourth perhaps i think that with with sordo then there might possibly be just the the sense for me that he wasn't too bothered about losing the podium and I think that Hyundai have changed tactics this year almost in terms of we need you to make sure you definitely bring home manufacturer points Danny you have to make sure that you bring it home in the top five don't take too many risks I think they're almost in that kind of scenario now and at the moment it is working for them they're picking up the points that they need at the top of the championship um, to me he didn't seem too fussed but um, definitely obviously if the car is there he's still going to be higher so Still a sign of that. Uh, let's go on to Citroen now. Disappointing weekend for those guys. Um, but the result was fine for OJ. Um, <laughs> moved up into second. We were kind of saying before we started recording, how on earth did he get up to there? Yeah, I don't know. It's very OJ, isn't it? We're just saying we compared him to Hamilton in F1. You know, he always seems to, to, to get the result even on his sort of off day. So yeah, full credit to OJ and Citroen for, for getting that one. Like you said, a bad weekend in terms of pace, but I think a pretty good weekend really in terms of uh, in terms of results. You know, two points off the, the lead of the, the Drivers' Championship uh, and also the second in the Constructors, which is quite impressive, only being a two-car outfit. And Lappi, once again, didn't he? Not have a great rally. Um, yeah, he seems to be chilling with Citroen a little difficultly. I mean, he's, he's shown uh, a fair bit of pace, but not quite, you know, once again over the whole course of the rally. Um, yeah, came home seven, so not terrible, but uh, certainly a much better rally for OJ than, than, than Lappy. Yeah, I think Lappy, um, Lappy was just after Friday, really just make sure I don't crash because he's mm -hmm. had a, a few uh, retirements, hasn't he, so far this season. So, yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, they'll they'll look to be improving, but as you say in the championship, it's a surprise that they're doing so well uh, in the manufacturers, despite only having two cars. I, I kind of some um, people were speaking about it. I think um, um, that it might persuade them to bring back a third car, but uh, unfortunately, I don't see that happening. But that would be 
nice to see because um, at the moment it does look like it's a two horse race in the championship but if Toyota are adding a third car I think they could be there or thereabouts yeah definitely um, yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much uh, you know that's all I can say pretty much uh, yeah definitely I mean even I mean, even with two cars you know they're not they're not too mm. far off so uh, we'll see that that will be quite impressive they managed to, to pull that one out uh, and uh, I suppose that covers everything from WRC there was plenty uh, of drama in that but there was also plenty of drama in WRC too we'll um we'll start by getting pro out the way two cars <laughs> Robin Perra crashed uh couldn't restart Pinalcek crashed could restart so he got 25 points um yeah that championship isn't really working out at the moment but um Robin Perra we've kind of spoken about is not having a good time at the moment and we say about him kind of being uh, a certain thing at Toyota next year I think there's going to be big question marks on that because he just has well, he's done three rallies so far and had problems in all three of them yeah well I hope there's questions from his side as well you know I hope that his management and, and him as a driver just doesn't rush himself into a big seat you know doesn't rush promotion um, because he might also get to a stage where like they just have to Toyota just have to give him a seat otherwise someone else will even if he's not performing at the moment they know that there's such great potential there they just need him in one of their cars but yeah it's, it's not going great is it this is three rallies now where he's had a you know out of three where he's had a big incident and this one um, being the biggest of it being an actual retirement so uh, yeah not good stuff and his pace wasn't even very good either he, he struggled at first first trip to Corsica so that's understandable but mm. um You've kind of got to have that one or the other, haven't you? You've got to be blindingly quick and crash, or <laughs> <laughs> not slow, slow make and it crash, to the finish. Yeah. yeah, that is very true, actually. Yeah. So maybe um, I don't know. Have we seen him much being good that good on on asphalt? Oh, he's decent on tarmac before, well, hasn't he? But uh, yeah, I mean, Spain <laughs> last year he was um, fighting with Kapeski, beat him, didn't he? That's true. Uh, so was the hundred um, percent record was on until Robin Perry defeated him. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, <laughs> We spoke a, a lot, topic. haven't we? <laughs> Kopeski should be in that car. They, they, um, he was at the Czech Championship uh, this weekend, and he won that twenty-fourth Czech win in a row. Um, but they, I think they're just waiting for the new Skoda before he starts then competing. Because um, at the moment, Skoda aren't, aren't really doing too well, are they? Really do we know? Do we know when that Skoda is coming? Um, I've heard lots of different dates i originally thought it was going to be at this round but um i think it might be waiting until after the uh after the summer break so okay uh, that's a little bit of a wait for them um let's go on to the main wrc2 category wow it all kicked off in this uh, and fabio andolfi won um probably a name that um not many have heard of we didn't really discuss him before uh, the event but he came second tier last year in WRC2 and he's gone one step better now uh, so obviously Corsica a strong event for him and uh, he fought off uh, Nicolo Gryzin uh, in the final day that was a, a good battle there uh, and uh, Oli Christian Vaby crashed out from third place um, but before that Eric Camely absolutely dominated it on his first appearance in a privately entered um, Polo GTI R5 and um, cruelly denied by fire, unfortunately, uh, of what would have been a certain victory for him. Yeah, Eric Camelli can not really catch a break, can he? But he can catch fire, apparently. But yeah, um, yeah, really, really, really not good um, result, really. Because, <laughs> like you said, he was so, so impressive, especially on Friday. He was absolutely dominant. Um, and I really thought that the Polos might win every round from now on, but uh, that wasn't to be the case. And like you said, you know, Vaby and another Polo lost a wheel. Um, Nicholas Klamin, I don't know how to pronounce it to be honest, but uh, he also had a mechanical failure as well on stage nine. So, yeah, not great stuff from the Polos. I mean, they're very, very quick. I think there's little doubt about that. I guess still questions over their reliability. Um, but yeah, great win, really, for Andalofi. I mean, like we said, we didn't mention him really. He wasn't really among those that we thought might be up there, or really anyone thought they might be up there. But uh, he came out with the 25 points, his first class win, and hopefully we'll see him in other events, uh, you know, rather than just course, could be nice. Uh, hopefully this will give a bit of funding for the rest of the year. I think Gryzin, for me, um, uh, was fantastic as well to come second. His first trip to Corsica, uh -huh. only second WRC2 round. And with Vaby, um, if Vaby had brought it home in third, he would have looked really good in the championship. It would have been a first and two thirds from his first three rounds. But uh, he's got a retirement now. I think Gryzin could be one 
fighting for the championship because he looks really, really strong. And I must mention as well, actually, sorry, uh, uh, Kaitan Kantanovic uh, was in third place. Uh, he was in a polo as well. Uh, he had a, a really good performance, the three-time European rally champion, his first um, appearance in a polo, and he was doing a good job to finish in third as, as well. So I think we've got plenty of contenders for the WRC2 championship. It's, it's looking like a good season. Yeah, I'd say no favourites have emerged, I think, really. Um, yeah, it literally could be, I think, any, any one of those. And, you know, Revan Perra, I guess, could still come and get it. I mean, obviously, he's in the pro category, but uh, once we do our sort of combined rankings, then, uh, you know, maybe he could be up there if he if he gets his act together. But at the moment, um, I'd say probably the Polars are looking the best. Um, or Grizan, as he said. So, yeah, uh, any of those, really. Yeah, the, the, those Polos have taken the, the class by storm, haven't they? So. Yeah. It's what we needed. We needed a shake-up, didn't we? But I don't want it to be this dominant, but <laughs> we'll see. If it's still got reliability issues, it kind of balances out. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, the junior WRC class. Uh, another fantastic fight. And I think we've got the strongest junior class that we've had in a good number of years because a lot of the time we saw loads of people having problems in the junior category and someone storming off and winning by one or two minutes. But for the second round in a row, there's been a, a number of people fighting closely for the podium spots. Uh, Julius Tannett came out on top in the end, but uh, Tom Christensen ran it very, very close. Um, he was the winner in Sweden and was leading uh, until the very final stage where he got overtaken uh, by Tannett. But really impressive from him, a new name for this season, uh, to win in Sweden and then to be competitive as well in Corsica is very good signs. Uh, and then Tannett, obviously, uh, a great job from him winning. Uh, and Radstrom was also in that fight right until the final day. Uh, where he kind of fell away uh, and was third in the end. But I think the junior class looks fantastic this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, Tanet's um, quite experienced, actually, for a junior, I'd say. I think he's like 28 years old, so he's he's uh, a little bit older. But, I mean, a really impressive last stage. Uh, it was pretty much a three-way fight as well. for the. Well, it was pretty much a two-way fight, really, between Kristen and, and uh, Radstrom. And then Tanet sort of came out of nowhere and, yeah, yeah. and took the win. So, really good stuff. And I think Radstrom being there is a great yardstick because we know that he was... You know, very competitive last year. I think he came as a runner-up, didn't he, to um, to Bergvist. Uh, and now he's sort of been beaten by these other guys. So it really does uh, a good testament to just how quick they are. Uh, and Christensen as well, proving that he's not just good on snow and uh, will be a contender all season long. Yep, and um, uh, there were another few people who put in some good stage times as well. Uh, Jan Solans was looking pretty good before he uh, had a few issues. So plenty of people to look out for in the juniors. Um Obviously, Martin Sex got retirement accident yes. three stages in once again. So yeah. we'll have to see. Ken Torn as well, an engine failure, I think. And rolled in the shakedown, I think. Yeah, and we, we know those guys have definitely got the capability of being up there. So two rounds into that season. I can't remember whether it's five or six rounds that they're doing with that this year. Um, but uh, that's, that's shaping up nicely. Um, next up is Rally Argentina. Uh, a very different round uh, from here in Corsica. And uh, it's going to be interesting with the championship order all changed around uh, going into the next event. So should be a cracking one. Plenty of drama here in Corsica. And I think that's going to be a sign of uh, the whole season coming up. Going to be an interesting one with the top three in the championship separated by just five points. We'll see you ahead of Rally Argentina. Thank you very much for listening today and goodbye.